In this video, we're going to get an overview of the new Fused Location Provider API that's available in Google Play Services. So this offers a lot of advantages over the old location service that we used to use. One footnote is you do have to have the Google Play Services library available to your application. So this might limit your application if you're deploying to certain devices that are not full Android devices. So why do we have the new Fused Location Provider? Well, location consumes a lot of power. It has to listen for a signal from the satellites or triangulation. It has to compute the location. Uh, it's a very energy intensive operation. So what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we're getting an accurate amount of location, but not consuming too much battery life. Uh, users can see on an Android phone what location requesting apps are consuming a lot of power. Uh, you can take a look under battery life and it will show you which apps are consuming more power than others. So we wanna make sure that we don't overwhelm the user. We want, it, do we just need to find the location to determine where the user is, for instance, or do we actually wanna track the user? Is the user actually GPSing things or playing a game that uh, requires location? Another big advantage of the new location API is that we can piggyback requests. So if we have multiple applications requesting GPS information, one application can simply receive updates when a different application requests an update. The nice thing about that piggyback is if you're piggybacking off of a different application, you don't get dinged for battery usage. You're simply listening to that task from another application. Another advantage is in the old days, we had things like location criteria, or we could specifically say, I want GPS, or I want cell tower triangulation, or, or whatever. But with the, location, with the location API, we don't have to specify if we're using satellite or triangulation, cell tower, whatever. We're just trusting the device to get whatever location it has available to us. So what are the prerequisites? Well, we do need to have that, uh, the, the Google Play services, which means we're going to, uh, assuming we're using Android Studio, we are going to need to add this to our uh, build.gradle file in the dependencies block. In Eclipse, what you would need to do is import the Google Play services lib. I have several videos that cover that when we talk about Google Maps. So just look for my videos that are talking about uh, using Google Maps in the Android AVD. Just search my channel for that, you'll find them. That will give us, uh, that will give us access to some classes that we're gonna need to use. Uh, Fused Location Provider API, Google API Client, and then the Location Request. We'll see how these all come together in just a moment. Additionally, we're gonna have some callbacks that we're gonna to need to implement. Now a callback means I'm a class, I implement an interface, that interface has methods. I'm going to take the, this class and these methods, I'm going to provide them to a service, and when that service has some action it wants to take, it's going to call those methods back on me. I know that sounds a little confusing, maybe a little recursive, but basically, we're defining some methods that will be called when a specific action occurs. Okay, location request. Now this is interesting because we have three methods that we want to consider. Set interval, then set fastest interval, and then also priority. Set interval says, this is how frequently I want to request updates. So uh, this number will count against our battery consumption. So I actively want to request updates maybe once per minute. For my own app, plantplaces.com mobile, I'm GPSing plants, and I found that it took about a minute to walk to a tree and GPS it and type in the tree's name. So I found about a minute is fine. That is fairly frequent, but nonetheless, uh, for actively GPSing something, that's fine. Now, fastest interval, what is that? You can get more frequent updates than you have in set interval if other apps on the phone are requesting updates. So what you say is set interval is how often I want to request updates, but then the fastest interval means if other applications on my phone are requesting location, 
I'll piggyback off them and I can potentially get those updates uh, when the other applications are asking for them. So the fastest interval should be a smaller number, number than the interval, maybe 30 seconds or so, where the interval might be 60 seconds. And actually we compute that in milliseconds, but nonetheless. That gives us an opportunity to get more uh, frequent updates without costing battery. Now the other thing we want to consider is the priority. And this again is giving us uh, an accuracy versus battery life. Balanced power is fairly common. That says, just give me an idea of where I am, maybe on a block. Uh, so tell me, is there a coffee shop nearby or uh, a restaurant or something like that? High accuracy means give me the absolute highest accuracy you can, whatever that is. Uh, and then low accuracy is city level. So just tell me roughly where I am. Uh, no power means, well, give me the best accuracy that I can have without costing any battery power. I want to point these bottom two out uh, in particular because I already gave an example with GPSing plants of where I might use balanced power or actually high accuracy if I'm GPSing maybe a small plant like a flower or a shrub versus a large plant like a tree. Now for low accuracy and no power, uh, I, when I have offered this course at Northwestern University, uh, a lot of people have taken advantage of the Chicago Open Data Initiative and they've made apps that uh, are based on that data initiative. But what's neat is that uh, that open data initiative is spreading. So you don't want to tie your application down to one city. What I've recommended in these cases is don't have the word Chicago in the name of your app. Just call it whatever you want to call your app without the city name. Then when the user starts the app, find out where the user is, what city the user is in, and then uh, default everything to that city and allow the user to overwrite it. But this allows you to write an app that works in Chicago, but also works maybe in Seattle or in other cities that are also using that open data initiative. So you want to find out where the user is, but uh, you only need that information one time. You don't need to track the user. You just want to say, is the user in Chicago or is the user in Seattle or is the user in Cincinnati? In those cases, priority low power and priority no power are ideal. Okay, uh, on a similar note, we can say fuse location provider. We can call this get last location. And that just tells me, hey, can you give me an idea of where this device recently has been? Uh, so can you tell me the last location that was received? Again, that's ideal for uh, what I was just talking about, where you have maybe some uh, you, you want to personalize it. You want to show uh, you want to show cafes that are in that user's city, uh, but it doesn't necessarily have to be a cafe that's right next to the user. Or you want to say another one might be uh, touristy things to do. What are good things to do as a tourist in Chicago, Seattle, Cincinnati? Well, you don't need to necessarily say around you right now. You certainly could, but you could simply say here are the top itineraries for Chicago, Seattle, Cincinnati. Here are the top museums for those locales. But by using this get last location, you default it to where you think the user is. So your home screen says, I see you're in Seattle, here are the museums. I see you're in Chicago, here are the museums, so on and so forth. That's where get last location is handy. It doesn't require a lot of programming and it doesn't require a lot of power. Now, on the other hand, let's say you want to track the user and you want to do maybe some proximity marketing. Like say, I see you are near this cafe, I see you are near this restaurant, or you want to GPS a plant that's right next to you. In that case, we want to get frequent updates. And the Fused Location Provider API re request location updates. That allows us to do that and it glues together some of the classes that we've seen previously. The Google API client that we get from the Google Play services, the location request, and remember that's where we're saying what's our accuracy and we're saying uh, what's, our, what's our frequency for updates. And then finally this thing called location listener. Location listener is an interface that has a method called on location changed. And it says, okay, when a minute has passed, or when the set fastest interval, the set interval, when that has passed, and I do receive a new location, provided that I can receive that location, I'm going to invoke this onLocationChanged method. 
that methods defined in this interface called location listener. Any class can implement that method, but in practice, it's usually the activity we're currently in that implements that location listener because a lot of times that activity wants to do something like update a map or send a proximity notification or update a GPS. In our example, we're going to use this on our GPS a plant screen. So we've seen this overview now. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. Uh, in our next video, we're going to implement this, uh, in this case, in Android Studio. So I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you.